Hey, did you know that you can advise multi-million dollar companies on their online digital distribution models? Now, I know what you're thinking, but Maddox, I don't have a degree in finance or marketing. Doesn't that make me an unqualified dipshit? Why, yes, it does. But don't worry, all you need is a Steam account and your parents' credit card number. Welcome to the best show in the universe, I'm Maddox. Borderlands is a hugely popular game series, and it was announced recently that the new sequel would be released on every platform. Except it will be exclusive for six months on the Epic Game Store instead of launching the same day on Steam. And predictably, gamers turned this into a civil rights movement and started review bombing all the other games in the entire franchise, because that's a reasonable thing to do. The reasons they cite for being angry range from overblown security issues to dumbass theories about how Epic is secretly harvesting data for China, because apparently China is building their next generation military weapons using data collected exclusively from how shitty you are at Fortnite. To be fair, there is a kernel of truth to some of these claims. There have been some vulnerabilities in the Epic Game Store, but there are security issues on every platform, even their sacred cow, Steam. Except everyone has amnesia when they're part of an outrage mob. Everyone forgets all the time Steam has been buggy or hacked over the years. Like the Christmas Day bug where users were randomly logged into other people's accounts and could access their private information. And then it took them three months to notify users who were affected. Or then there was the October bug that caused some indie developers to lose over half their revenue, and it still hadn't been solved two months later. Or when 77,000 Steam users were being hacked in 2015, not one time, but every single month. But that didn't stop the angry mob from bombing these games with irrelevant negative reviews. Many angry gamers resorted to spamming the store with garbage like this. And when they weren't mindlessly spamming the site with the same unoriginal ASCII art, they were spamming it mindlessly with angry reviews, like this guy who wrote his entire review addressing CEO Randy Pitchford, like he's personally going through all 24,000 reviews individually. This review is dramatic enough for a stage play. This game series doesn't exist to me anymore. Randy Pitchford just permanently lost Take-Two Interactive and Borderland 3 any chance of a customer. Epic fail. I hope that Epic Games paid for your development costs, Randy because I most definitely won't, Randy. You could put it up on Steam for free and I won't download it, Randy. And yes, this is a review bomb because it blew up in your face, Randy. I can't believe I paid for this, even on sale. Never again, Randy. And then there's this idiot who recommends pirating the game and even includes a link to a torrent website where people can steal it. The reason for his displeasure? He claims that Epic is a platform with serious security issues. Hey idiot, you're linking to a torrent website. Ah yes, torrents. The last bastion of safety on the internet. The only place where you know what you click on is always what you get. And nobody has ever included malware, viruses, or ransomware in a torrent. Every security-minded IT manager knows that when it comes to safety, your best bet is to download a cracked game that includes a third-party MIDI intro and an ASCII splash page. He goes on to say that he feels forced to choose between his personal data safety and playing the new game. Nobody is forcing you to download anything, dipshit. It's a video game. He continues, I just can't justify putting personal data at risk by using some shady platform. First of all, nobody gives a shit about your personal data. The personal data on your Steam profile is full of half-completed trophy quests and shitty irrelevant reviews. Nobody's going to be putting your hacked game progress on WikiLeaks anytime soon. The most valuable thing you have on your account is your parents' credit card number. You add nothing to society. Here's another reviewer who says he'll change his review if Borderlands 3 is not an Epic Store exclusive at launch. And then he spammed his review on all the Borderlands games. So not only is his shitty, irrelevant opinion taking up space on the internet, he's trying to ruin all the games in the entire franchise because of his displeasure. The most mind-boggling part is when he says that he will change his review if they meet his austere conditions, like some kind of review hostage negotiation. First of all, nobody is waiting with bated breath to see what you think of the game, idiot. He's logged a grand total of 0.2 hours in the game. It takes seven and a half minutes just to get past the intro and character selection screen. So that means he's played roughly four and a half minutes of gameplay. That's not even enough time to finish the tutorial stage. And even if his review was positive, it still wouldn't matter because he stated his condition for changing his review is contingent upon the distribution platform. So it's still not a review of the actual game. Get the fuck over yourself. 
This kind of horseshit has been going on for years on Steam's platform. The game Elite Dangerous got review bombed in 2010, Tales of Zestiria in 2015, and the indie horror game Devotion got review bombed by angry Chinese gamers because of a small background texture that referenced a meme comparing China's president to Winnie the Pooh. So gamers decided the company should go out of business. Wow, that sounds like another reasonable response. Now you must be thinking, why are these people so upset about the Epic Store? Is it because the game costs more money? No. Is it because they will never be able to play it on any other platform? Well, no, it's coming to Steam, they just have to wait six months. It will also be available on PS4 and Xbox at launch. Does it mean they have to uninstall Steam so they can no longer play the games they've purchased on it? No, that's not it either. So why are they so upset? Well, other than the overblown complaints, it's generally because they have to install a new game launcher that takes a few extra clicks. Oh no, not that. And as for publishers, gamers have accused them of switching to Epic because they'll make more money. That is absolutely 100% true. Epic gives publishers a way better deal at 88% instead of 65 or 70% on Steam. That's about 20% more revenue, plus a nice bonus for the six month exclusive deal. Publishers have been dissatisfied with Steam's revenue model for years. According to a 2018 survey by Lars Doucet from PC Gamer, only 10% of developers felt that Valve earned the cut that they were taking in 2018 compared to 40 to 60% in years before. So of course they're going to go with Epic. They have a clear financial incentive to do so. And Epic CEO even threw down an ultimatum and said if Valve matched their revenue split, they would not only stop signing exclusive deals, but that they would consider putting their own games on Steam's platform. This means all the developers in the entire industry would make more money, which could result in more games and better games, meaning everyone would win. But of course, in spite of all these facts, and despite the fact that this won't cost gamers any more money, some gamers still felt that it was necessary to whine about how they think the publishers are being greedy. YouTuber Yangye explains this in a video he made recently, and I'm not shitting on Yangye, he does some great content, but this is a good example of the argument I'm hearing a lot of. Borderlands 3 will be well recognized, sell gangbusters, and make a lot of money even if it's released on both Epic Game Store and Steam. I'm struggling to think of a tangible justification for making a game like Borderlands 3 exclusive. He goes on to cite a post on Reddit in which someone said Borderlands 3 was guaranteed to be a financial success. What are you, a mind reader, dipshit? This is a common sentiment amongst outraged gamers, but here is the problem with arguments like these. You aren't a psychic. There's no such thing as a guaranteed success in anything. A single bad game can wipe out a studio's entire game franchise. And even if the game doesn't spell financial ruin for the studio, oftentimes the hit to morale is so severe that many people will get new jobs so you'll never get a game by the same studio or development team ever again. Since you dipshits have the memory of a fruit fly colony, I'll remind you of a little franchise called Mass Effect. It was one of the biggest and most successful RPGs for over a decade with three hugely successful games until Mass Effect Andromeda came out. And despite having amazing graphics, lots of hype, and a huge fan base, Andromeda still flopped. In fact, the game did so poorly that EA put the series on an indefinite hold and scaled down the studio responsible for it. If these companies find a way to put a little bit more cash in their war chests without costing consumers any more money, who cares? Let them! Do you fucking idiots like video games or not? It's like you want these companies to go out of business. The one rallying cry gamers use to point out unfair practices by game companies is when Metro Exodus switched platforms from Steam to Epic after people already purchased it on Steam. While that's a pretty shitty deal, they honored all the pre-purchases on Epic's game store and lowered the price to $50 instead of $60 because they were making so much more money on Epic. And the game ended up selling two and a half times more copies than on Steam. What's the problem? Yange goes on to quote the former CEO of Take-Two as saying they supported broad distribution. We have not been a believer in exclusive relationships, he said. Bullshit. What's bullshit about that quote? Did you even read it? He literally says generally speaking. Generally means not always. So that leaves room for exceptions like Borderlands 3. And then there's the complaint that Epic doesn't have all the same features. Well, no shit. Epic has only been around for five months. You're comparing it to Steam that has been around for 13 years. Let's take a look at what Steam looked like when it first launched in 2003. Wow, cool store. Man, it looks like shit. Who designed it? Me? <coughs> when Steam first launched, its authentication servers for Half-Life 2 were so swamped that people who legally own physical copies of the game couldn't even play them. I know because it happened to me. I took my game to a friend's house to cheer him up because he was sick, but I got locked out of my account and my friend died. Thanks for nothing. 
Plus, according to PC Gamer, even when it worked, it had slow download speeds, a clunky interface, and required frequent patching. The website looked like shit even a year after it launched in 2004, and it didn't even have any third-party games until two years later. People also complained that the Epic Store doesn't have a search function, but neither did Steam when it first launched. In fact, it took them four years to finally get a proper search function. Not that it matters, because why the fuck does Epic need a search function anyway? Currently, there are only about 50 games on the store. Just glance at the front page, you idiots! Your time isn't that valuable if you have time to write hundreds of fake reviews about a video game. And you're not even talking about the video game, you're talking about the company's distribution model, which you aren't qualified to advise them on. Who gives a shit about search? Steam needs one because they have thousands of games and lots of bullshit to sift through. While Epic does have the benefit of Steam treading the path for many of the features that gamers have come to expect, it's still only five months old. Calm your tits, they'll get to it. Or maybe they won't, because according to a survey in PC Gamer, it showed that despite all the extra features on Steam, most developers don't even utilize them. So stop pretending you give a shit about asynchronous game notifications. Nobody even knows what that means. Not a single fucking person. Shut your crybaby mouths. But again, none of these facts matter to the hordes of angry, irrational idiots who write fake negative reviews. They don't think beyond their immediate piss fit because critical thinking is in short supply with these blowhards. This Reddit post exemplifies how a lot of gamers feel because they think writing thousands of fake reviews is a valid way to get a reaction out of the company. No, it's not, you fucking idiots. The only valid way to protest a game is by not buying it. Don't like it? Don't buy it. That's it. That's the end of your transaction. Buy the game or don't. And this guy even has the audacity to complain that Epic Game Store doesn't have reviews on it. Yeah, no shit. When you crybaby morons abuse the system like this, why would they rush to implement them? Do you think it's going to make it more likely that these companies will implement these features in the future, or less? Do you think your little counterproductive shit fit is helping anyone? You're simultaneously driving developers to platforms like Epic while making online reviews meaningless. To developers, publishing on a platform that's not susceptible to review bombs is a benefit, not a drawback. In fact, Randy Pitchford said as much in this tweet, ironically, that this misuse is possible and that Steam has no interest in correcting this misuse makes me kind of happy about 2K's decision and it makes me want to reconsider Gearbox Publishing's current posture on the platform. In response, Steam did take action after this happened, but the way they address it is by adding an asterisk to the reviews. There we go, that should do it. Good job, Valve. But to be fair, they don't count reviews during abnormal periods towards the score. But some people just wait until the period is over, and then they write their bullshit review. Like this guy, who waited 20 days to weigh in on 2K's financial decisions. Wow, thanks for your insight, Frederick August von Dumbass. So not only do dipshits like him think that they're qualified to advise multi-million dollar companies on their economics and distribution models, but they feel justified in taking punitive action with bad reviews unless they get their way. This is like a shit-tier hostage negotiation. This also happened to Mortal Kombat 11 recently when users unceremoniously bombed the game's ranking in part because they redesigned some of the female characters. For example, people complain that Scarlet's default skin is now wearing too much clothes. Like this guy saying, can Scarlet put on any more clothes in the desert? Yeah, that's what people wear in the desert, dumbass. You don't wear less clothes if you're spending extended time under punishing sunlight. You wear more to protect you from the exposed elements, you dipshit. Not that realism matters because it's a game with time-traveling robots, teleportation, and moves that let players break your spinal cord mid-fight. It's a fucking video game. Another common complaint was that the men in the game were too naked, while the women wore full bodysuits. First of all, who are all these people still jacking off to video games? I mean, I get it, I like it too, but fucking porn's everywhere. And second, they illustrated Scarlet in full bodysuit in the comic books that came out in 2015. They've been experimenting with her looks basically since the character's inception. Then this guy whines about how they gave Scarlet a burka in Mortal Kombat 11. But they were experimenting with this look in Mortal Kombat 9 that came out over 8 years ago, you fucking idiots. For the new game, her costume looks like an amalgam of ninjas and Bedouin culture. Who gives a shit? They also gave her a Cold War inspired costume. These are just optional character skins, not a statement about NetherRealm Studios' preferred socioeconomic model, you morons. They'd probably give her a capitalist costume too if it didn't consist of a three-piece suit and loafers. Wow, fun. 
and some people complained that the game was too political in SJW, in part because of Jax's ending. He goes back in time and ends slavery. I owe it to them to put things right. Yeah, wow. Real controversial. It's less than one minute of content for one character in a roster of 28, and this was apparently too much for some people to stomach. This guy went so far as to complain that the studio hired too many hipsters and Jews. And there were a slew of YouTube videos made about this ending, like this person who made a 10 and a half minute video about the minute long ending, interpreting a cartoon drawing at the end as a black ethno state because there weren't enough white people in it. It seems to be a bunch of black people in a Wakandan type setting. Um, and, and I think there might be one non-black person there. So basically, Jax has created apparently a black ethno state. Wow, great argument, Liana. By that logic, we can conclude that you've created a white ethno state in your living room because there are no black people in it. She goes on to say that by going back in time and freeing the slaves, Jax was a tyrant because he didn't even ask them. Did he ask them if, if they wanted it changed? No, he didn't, which makes him a tyrant. And then there's this guy who questions why he wanted to end slavery in the first place. Are you like the time? I am the time god. Listen to me. Stop. Stop enslaving man. It's like, why? And he goes on to complain that they didn't show how Jax's ending would impact European lifestyles and culture or the founding fathers. Yes, in a one minute ending, he wanted... <laughs> he wanted a conclusion. Well, what about our founding fathers? And of course, there's no mention of the butterfly effect or how that impacted European politics or lifestyles or culture or the founding fathers. Uh, Jax just suddenly magically stopped the slave trade in Europe. Yes, he magically stopped the slave trade in Europe because it's magic. Time travel doesn't exist. Bionic flame arms don't exist. Supernatural combat tournaments don't exist. Shut the fuck up. You guys are sucking the entertainment out of entertainment. To be fair, most of the negative reviews for Mortal Kombat 11 are about the grinding system, microtransaction, and bugs. And a lot of these criticisms are valid, but there's still a lot of bullshit that Steam allows on their platform. For example, this nearly incomprehensible moron who reviewed the game badly because his friend lied to him about his experience level and kicked his ass and laughed at him while lying and saying that he was just pressing the A button the entire time. He knows all the combos. This guy wrote a bad review of the game because his friend kicked his ass at the game. Great. This is a valid review according to Valve. Awesome. <laughs> Very helpful. And even when the reviews are positive, there's still a lot of garbage on the site like this, which one person found helpful. One person took time out of their day and thought, hmm, you know what, I think I'll check the reviews for Mortal Kombat. Then they saw this text preview, clicked on the link, saw the title written out 88 more times and thought, you know what? I find this helpful. I get the tough position Valve is in because if they start deleting comments, then everyone turns into a free speech warrior, claiming that they're being censored. But when they tolerate people leaving links to torrent websites that encourage the theft of their games, why the fuck would publishers want to continue using your platform? You've made billions of dollars. Clean your shit up. Allowing users to post the same ASCII art over and over again for negative reviews just to hurt a franchise isn't speech, it's spam. It's easy to filter it out, but the problem isn't a lack of ability, it's a lack of willpower. That's it for now. Until next time, I'm Matt Ox. Yes, the Founding Fathers, they wanted him to... <laughs> oh my god.